Uh, hello, everybody, and thank you very much for this invitation. It's very nice to be here <coughs> and to speak on more practical issues that you, I, I hope you will find uh, useful. So my main aim of, of this presentation basically is to give you a brief overview uh, how to use the database and what is its purpose, uh, with the hope that maybe the database will be more used in future. Uh, because we have big interest that the database is used. Uh, and I don't know how many of you had possibility to see the database before, um, but it is hosted by, by the EU IPO uh, Observatory, so called Observatory Department. Uh, and we have a specific website uh, where you can find the link to the database. I have highlighted in green uh, where you can find the database. So basically, if you, if you type, in, type in Google EUIPO Open Works, this should uh, come as a result. Um, also, we have some general information about Open Works, which you, which you will find uh, in, in the leaflet, which was distributed to you today. Uh, so we have some information. Uh, and the database was built uh, in accordance with the Open Works Directive. Uh, we consulted member states when we were establishing the database. Um, not only member states, but all concerned stakeholders. So everybody provided their input. Um, and basically, the database has three types of users, uh, member of the public, uh, so-called beneficiary organization, which are cultural organizations, uh, museums like Radis Archives, public service broadcasters, uh, and competent national authority user. So I just start by type of user and explain how, how each each type of user can use the database. So the database is publicly accessible. You don't need to pay for it. It's, it's online. Uh, and anybody from the public uh, can do basic and advanced search. There are certain criteria how to search the database. Um, and to go for advanced search, you see that link, advanced search. And advanced search actually is very detailed. Uh, we worked improving it, uh, so now you can search by different categories of, of information. You can combine search criteria um, in, in different ways. <coughs> Here you can see search results. And as, as a member of the public, you can view each, de each detail of the record. So you see the highlighted green button where you can click it and you can get detailed information about each record in the database. Um, there you will find um, such, as, such details as uh, open work title, description, and so on, right holder information, um, where this information, of course, is provided. Uh, and there are several fields, so it's possible to skip through, through these fields. And the last step, use of the open work, uh, the, the general user can see the organization which is using the open work. In this example, you see the British Library uh, and the name where the, the, the work is used. And also, user can get uh, contact details in case they want to contact this organization and possibly to claim rights uh, to their work. Now, if, if potential rights holder is searching the database, uh, there is a possibility to claim rights in, via the database. It's not a mandatory function, it is optional function because it can be implemented differently in different member states. Um, so it's also possible that right holder goes directly to each organization, writes them emails because contact details are there. But also it is possible to claim rights via the database. Uh, in that case, they have to click this button, which is uh, also highlighted, and then they have to fill in certain information very basic information, who they are, where they come from, and what is the reason for claiming their rights. Um, then capture just to make sure that this is not a robot or that this is an actual person. And then this information will go to, uh, to the organization which is using the work, to the owner of that record. They will get a notification, uh, and they will be responsible for deciding if this right holder is really right right holder, do they need more information? Do they need some evidence? Uh, and if they don't agree, as Natasha explained, there might be a court procedure. Um, and finally, they are responsible for either for changing the status of the record uh, or for refusing this. 
status plane. Because once after the status plane is made, the status of the record is changing to status <coughs> change claim. So uh, in the database, organizations are able to see that there is something wrong already with this record. For example, if another organization would like to use the same work, uh, possibly it would be better not to use it, because they see that there is some status change claiming procedure ongoing. So this is the process for member of the public, for, for potential right holder. Now, of course, the biggest part of users are beneficiary organizations, cultural organizations, uh, and they have uh, well, administrative duty uh, to register all fungals in the database once diligent searches are performed. Uh, so for beneficiary organizations to use the database, you already need to be registered as user in the database. And here I highlighted the link where organizations should go uh, to get access uh, to the database to use a password. Uh, again, certain <coughs> information has to be provided by each organization. Uh, then we <coughs> and then this information uh, is being sent to competent national authority. Uh, there is competent national authority in each member state. Uh, in Belgium, as from today, the competent national authority is, is the Royal Library. So once organization <coughs> provides their details to the database, notification will be sent to competent national authority. And their responsibility is to forward this information to the database. This way we ensure that we don't get fake organizations in the database. Um, so only after forwarding, organization gets access to the database. And they can log in into the database with username uh, and with password. Okay, once they are in, there are different options what you can do. Most importantly, you can record open works. To record work by work, you would use the, uh, the box on the, on the left, record open work. And if you have big got load of data, let's say over 1,000 records, uh, we would suggest you to use the bulk upload functionality. Uh, for the moment, it is supported with, a, with an Excel file which works in the same way, just the difference is that you don't need to type uh, each record word by word. You can upload all information into the Excel file. Uh, and this information will be extracted into the database. Uh, if there are status claims, organization would go into that box on the right side, either to change the status of the record, or to accept or to reject the claim. Uh, in the box My Records, organization uh, will be able to find all records which are either being in draft mode, if you are preparing some records, you will be able to find these records here, or if these records were forwarded already and available in the database. Uh, then there is quite detailed information about statistics, <coughs> how many records are registered uh, in your country, in your organization, uh, how many claims they were made, so we can find uh, the statistical data in statistics part. Mm -hmm. And in user management, um, it is possible to create new users for the organization. So if there are several people working uh, on digitization in your library or archive, you can create several users so that each can work uh, separately. Or if there is some change in people responsible, you can also add uh, details in the management section. Now, to record open work, there are four steps. In the first step, we have uh, general information about open work. Uh, maybe I will not go field by field just to highlight that not all information is mandatory. Uh, those fields which are mandatory, they are uh, marked with red asterisks. Maybe it's not so visible here, but there are not so many fields which are mandatory. Well, you have to provide, of course, title of work, description, some very basic information, uh, category of work, uh, then publication, broadcast, production information is not mandatory. If you have such information, it would be nice to provide it, but it's not mandatory. International standard number, also not mandatory. In many cases, even doesn't exist because we are talking about old works. Uh, right holder section is mandatory, so either you have to uh, 
to, to notify that right holder information is not available, or if some information is available, it is a requirement to indicate uh, name and surname. So it is possible to add as many right holders as you have. Um, if they are anonymous, it's possible to, to indicate. Uh, and if some right holders agree that their works are being used, it is also too possible to, to, to mark as right holder, identified and located where is a small box uh, next to the name. And on the basis of right holder information, we are determining the status of orphan work. So if right holder information is not known, this work will be considered as open, and if there are several right holders and some of them uh, has agreed to, to the use of the work, this, uh, this record will be determined as partial open. Uh, so this was for main, for main work information, and if there are embedded works, for example, photos in a book, or you have some newspaper articles, um, so these works can be recorded as embedded works, and it is the same procedure again. You can add as many embedded works as, as you wish. Um, and data fields are also the same. Here we have open work status. Uh, as I explained, the status is determined automatically by the system. It would be either open work or partial work, or if there is claim of status change, the record can become not open. Uh, we also have field where it is required to indicate member state or states where the region search was conducted uh, and the date period of search. Um, and the last section is for uh, showing the use of the work. Uh, it is very general field, uh, free text where you can enter project name, project title, um, and the organization uh, data is uploaded automatically by the system. Um, so as you see, we, the database does not collect the details of diligent searches. These details normally remain in the organization. Uh, what we collect is just, um, just some general information about the result of diligent search, basically, that the orphan work is declared as orphan. Also, it is interesting here in this section to mention that it is possible to add another orphan work use to already existing record we have this button, add open work use. So if you, for example, search the database and you find that this record is already registered in the database, means you don't need to repeat diligent searches, uh, another organization can add new use to, to already existing record uh, and the details of another organization using the same record will be shown in the system. So here we can have uh, several organizations using the same open work. But of course, the owner of the record will be responsible for editing the record. If some information has to be changed, it is the owner of the record who, who will be responsible. And in case of a status change claim, in such case, all organizations would be notified. And well, that's all. How to record all contact, <coughs> you will submit information. Um, and again, the same procedure. Notification goes to the competent national authority of your member state, and competent national authority is responsible for forwarding this data to the database. It's very technical procedure, I would say, um, and only after forwarding this information because it becomes publicly accessible to, to the public uh, in the database. Um, Well, about bulk upload procedure, I think I mentioned some, some general uh, details, but if you would like to use bulk upload, uh, basically you would need to contact EU IPO and we will provide you support. Uh, we will provide you the, uh, this Excel file, which, uh, which contains explanation how to fill it in. Uh, also, we have developed um, data extraction tool, uh, which currently supports uh, data extraction from MARC standard. So those of you who are from libraries probably know uh, that Mark Sander is used by the library sector. So we have data extraction tool, which allows you to connect to your local database and to extract data to, to the database using this data extraction tool. We are aware that this is one of the main concerns, how to provide data in simple form, in, in a 
not to making too much burden for organizations. Um, so we developed this data extraction, and currently we are looking into developing data extraction tools maybe for different sectors. If there is need, if there is some standard which is being used, uh, you could let us know, uh, and we could develop similar tools for, for other sectors. This is just a demonstration how the bulk upload works. So the procedure is the same. Excel file is uploaded, notification is being sent to competent national authority, and we forward information to the database. Uh, and my records are, are visible uh, in my record section. Here, organization can either edit or view the record in details. And while these records are in editing mode, it is possible uh, to remove them from the system. But once records are forwarded, uh, for the moment, uh, we do not have delete functionality, but currently we are looking into implementing also removal functionality. But this functionality will be uh, available for, for EU IPO uh, stuff, uh, because we had some issues that uh, there were some mistakes, some records were deleted by mistake, uh, uploaded by mistake. So currently we are looking into, into removal function. Um, I already mentioned uh, claiming status change procedure. So if beneficial organization receives notification that right holder is claiming <coughs> his rights, they will go into that status claim change box and they will find the particular record which is being claimed. Uh, and by clicking on this uh, item, uh, they will see who is claiming. So they will find the details of, of the right holder, potential right holder. Uh, and they can either accept it or, or reject it. Yes, so if, if the claim is accepted, then it would be status change uh, or, or if not reject. Uh, as, as far as user management is concerned, I will not go into, into very detail. It's quite technical. Uh, it's possible to edit, create new users. So I think it's, it's more or less clear. Uh, and then the last type of user is competent national authority user. <coughs> this is very specific user. Currently we have uh, competent national authorities for each member state. Um, these are either ministries of culture, IP offices, national libraries, different organizations in different countries. Uh, and they have the same access to the database with username and password. Um, and they have two main functions, forwarding information about beneficiaries and forwarding information about records. Also, we have statistical field and the same user management function. So if they receive information about new beneficiary organization, which is pending to be forwarded, they will see the details of that organization. Uh, and they will simply click forward button. And the same procedure with forwarding of work records. Uh, we have only view function, we do not have reject function, uh, so it means that we can only forward, or if there are some problems, then this record should not be forwarded, then probably it should notify us, and in the future we can look into, into deletion if, if required. Yes, and this is how statistical part looks. Uh, currently, we are also working on improving this part. Uh, so, for example, competent authority user will see how many organizations are registered in the country, uh, and in general in the database, how many records uh, there are in the database, and how many records belong to their country, um, how many of these records are embedded, uh, and how many claims there are in, in, in country and in general in the database. And also, we will see evolution of records in their own country, or we can select uh, any other country. So it's quite specific, and we can, uh, can extract this information if they wish. Um, well, the database was launched um, two years ago. Uh, and since then, we were working on improving it. We were building uh, new functionalities, also collecting feedback from users. Uh, trying to improve it, and normally we have either one or two new releases per year where we accommodate different needs. Uh, and in 2015, we implemented a number of changes um, 
there were some changes for competent national authority, um, improving notification system, uh, allowing organization to delete their record if the record was not forwarded. Um, then we implemented, for example, uh, search by international standard number, um, user management improvement. Uh, so different small things, but once you start using the database, they become important. Um, and in July 2015, we implemented the big advanced search feature. Um, also, we developed that extraction tool, which I mentioned. Uh, also improved uh, search results. And uh, also, we included uh, uh, possibility to provide a link to the open work or to the project where the open work is used. Because we received lots of feedback where it was uh, seeing that it's difficult to identify open work because the database collects information about open works. But sometimes it's difficult to, to find the, the actual open work and how can I find it. So currently we encourage organizations when they provide data so that they provide also the link to, to the actual record. Uh, that, that adds lots of benefit actually to the database. Um, and in 2016, uh, we, we developed integration layer for system to system integration, um, which uh, allows to add, search, and update information directly from beneficiary organization. So if any of your organizations uh, would like to use it, also please let us know. Um, and then we developed XML-based exchange of data. And currently, uh, we are working on new release. Um, we will, again, improve identification of records. We will include this uh, link to the, to the search results. Um, also, we will show more clearly how many embedded or main works are registered in the database. Um, so there will be better statistical data. Uh, and also, we are thinking about another data extraction tools. And what new standards could be supported. Um, so just to finish, I will show you the map um, with, with countries and the statistical data about the use of the database. So in, in total, we have uh, 24 countries with registered organizations in the database. Registered, it doesn't mean that these organizations use the database, sometimes they just register. Um, and the biggest part is libraries. We have 48 libraries, audiovisual 16, museums 20, 12, 12. Audiovisual and archive sometimes varying, also 16 and two public broadcasters. So in total we have 94 organizations um, as registered users, and we still have seven countries without without uh, no beneficial organization registration. So these countries are marked in red in the map. Um, and as regards orphan works, we have only 14 countries which are which record that often works in the database. Mm. In total, we have uh, 12,947 often works in the database. Uh, and out of those records, uh, over 10,000 are embedded works. And we have close to 2,000 main works. Uh, and still we have 17 countries with no often works data. Mm. Yes, so this is the statistical data in general overview if you have some specific questions uh, or if you would like to start using the database to register as user. Um, you, you see here our website, but actually our mail is uh, oftenworks.eypo.europa.eu uh, 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 and we will get to you immediately with any help or if you have some general questions. Thank you.